In natural or man-made disasters, search and rescue teams race against time to find survivors within the critical 72-hour time frame. They face challenges such as unstable structures or hazardous environments, as well as insufficient situational awareness. All of which lead to lengthy search and rescue processes. To speed up the process of finding survivors in collapsed buildings and improve working conditions for first responders, the Cursor project is developing an innovative Cursor search and rescue kit based on drones, miniaturized robots and advanced sensors. Cursor project has started 2019 uh, and it's funded by the European Commission. Uh, with the aim to accelerate search and rescue process and also to increase the safety of first responders. And, and for that purpose we are developing several technologies uh, in the air, on the ground, to uh, fulfill this aim. The project involves the development of the innovative Cursor Search and Rescue Kit, which includes soft miniaturized underground robotic finders, or SMURF, and various types of drones. The Smurfs are equipped with chemical sensors that enable them to detect a wide range of chemical substances that indicate the presence of a human. Furthermore, they are fitted with cameras and infrared cameras, as well as a microphone and a speaker to communicate with found people. They are being deployed by a transport drone from the operations center to the disaster site. On the ground, the robots work independently in clusters to search for survivors. In addition, the mothership drone acts as an aerial hub, providing high-resolution imagery for accurate visualization of the disaster area and allowing communication with the control center. Additionally, 3D modeling drones can be deployed in the affected area. The swarm of drones is used to create a 3D model of the site in order to get a better overview of the scene. The technology of photogrammetry provides a decision maker with a detailed view of every building, of every structure on the site that was affected by the disaster. And it allows him to do measurements like how wide is the street that is still open for vehicles to get to the test site, how big are the debris piles, how high are they, you can do measurements in the model. And that of course facilitates the planning of countermeasures for the emergency crews. The Cursor Search and Rescue Kit is designed in an open architecture that allows the integration of existing tools and technologies currently used by search and rescue teams or developed by other research projects. The different components and platforms of the Cursor Search and Rescue Kit follow the logic and sequence of the standard urban search and rescue operational procedures. Several facilities in Europe as well as Japan were involved in the research. Outside the gates of Paris, the team led by French CEA researcher Emmanuel Scorson worked with Krishna Persaud from the University of Manchester on the so-called sniffer. So the idea was to optimize the sensors to uh, be able to detect uh, these chemical markers of alive or deceased victims and to uh, help uh, in uh, search and rescue operations. In the Norwegian city of Trondheim, Sintef was working on the so-called Smurf. In the Cursor project, Sintef has uh, developed the motherboard for the Smurf, 3D printed all the Smurf parts, assembled them, integrated the components in it, 
and wrote the software to control and uh, get data from each sensor in the Smurf. Our development actually followed uh, the same logic as in all, uh, as for all components in, in Cursor, which means a gradual uh, development and iterative testing, incorporating test results and uh, first responder feedback back to our analysis, repeating the testing, and doing this iterative uh, process to arrive uh, here today. However, the project not only involved research on robots, drones or the sophisticated sniffers, another major part was the development of an IT and communication system to gather all the collected data in one place and make it available to the head of operations. Often uh, public uh, communication infrastructures are damaged or overloaded, so we provide uh, a solution uh, that is independent of these inf infrastructures and therefore uh, provides the connectivity and the opportunity of information to be exchanged without relying um, on systems that are no longer available in an incident. The COP is the platform uh, that is being used by the UCC, by the coordination cell, and the COP term is basically the mobile application that is being used by the team leader of the first responders teams in the field. The basic concept of the technology is to uh, integrate information from disparate forces, um, allow efficient and effective incident management, facilitate the collaboration uh, of multiple teams working together in different work sites, allowing the coordination cell to be able to manage resources, assets, uh, multiple information that are coming uh, uh, in parallel or simultaneously. Besides IT development, geophones were also a major element of the Cursor project. We produce the Geophones uh, system for the Cursor Toolkit um, or how we call it the Victim uh, Locator System. Uh, the main principle of this system uh, is that the Geophone teams, the technical teams within heavy, light or medium search and rescue teams, um, they deploy an array of geophones comprised of three geophones that are mounted in the ground in front of the work site uh, that they are searching for victims. Uh, they connect this array of geophones with our digitizer and our tablet uh, application that visualizes the signals that are retrieved when a victim is possibly hitting a wall or uh, hitting his or her legs in the ground uh, when he's buried uh, beneath uh, debris. Apart from development and research, the project also included practical testing. After all, one of the most important aspects is the collaboration with those who will later use the technologies in the field. We used a co-creative approach with continuous feedback loops to ensure this. Also, specifications have been defined with first responders and technical partners together at the beginning of the project. That is why the first responders were involved in the development process of the individual components at all times. In June 2022, the third use case test took place in France, the last one before the final large-scale field test in Greece. It is the last test before the final piloting event of the project and we are here to test the integration of uh, several of the components that have been developed uh, in the project. So what we wanted to test um, on this particular occasion was, was how the new technology and the innovation can be applied in real situations um, and, and used in real rescue simulations. Now 
know, we have few months to uh, work with uh, with the open issues what we discovered in this field test. And in November, we are coming back together again uh, and uh, see the progress, uh, test the progress. And this is unfortunately the last test. So, uh, yeah, we have to um, test everything what is open now in the ne next field test in November in Greece. After the test in France, it became clear that further improvements by the technical partners were necessary in order to implement the wishes and feedback of the first responders. Research continued in Japan after the test in summer, as well as in the several facilities in Europe, including Trondheim and Paris. We developed a first prototype, which was a standalone uh, prototype uh, that was tested uh, in the first field trial in Chambéry, and where we assessed the capability of the sensors to work in uh, different environments where we had smoke, uh, rain, and so on and so forth. After miniaturization of the sniffer, we worked with uh, uh, Sintef and the University of Tohoku to integrate this uh, sniffer into the Smurfs. What we get at Sintef is the design, a 3D model, and we 3D printed uh, the Smurfs here in our uh, room with our 3D printer. The next step was to assemble the Smurf and put inside all the components. So once uh, all the hardware has been is in place inside the Smurf, that is not uh, enough to have a working uh, prototype because there is a, the software part that is missing. And it's a key uh, part because uh, you need to first make sure that all the components communicate with each other. So you need to have software for doing that. You need to gather data at the Smurf level and send this data to the Smurf workstation on this side, because this is the main uh, human machine interface. In addition to the work in Europe, a special aspect is the cooperation with a team around Satoshi Tadokoro at the University of Tohoku in Japan. The teams from Norway, France and Japan had to work closely together on the development of the Smurf. This was a special event for Sintef team leader Giancarlo Marafiotti. When I first started to work on uh, robotics for search and rescue, uh, several years ago, I started reading a book written by uh, Professor Satoshi Tadokoro. And actually now I'm working with him. And this is super cool from my point of view. And I'm very happy about that. Meanwhile in France, CEA was figuring out the best and safest way to integrate the sensors in order to be able to use the obtained data in the most effective way possible. Part of the development was to integrate the sensors into sniffers. So uh, as far as the auto sensors are concerned, we had uh, an array of four, four quartz crystal microbalances uh, onto which we immobilize four different proteins. And on each of the sensor, each protein has a different affinity with different chemicals. So then by merging the data, we are uh, and doing some data processing, we are able to, uh, to obtain some chemical fingerprints of the odors that we are detecting, in this case, presence of a life or a deceased victim. So after uh, data collection, the, these data are processed in real time in the sniffer and smurf using a fuzzy logic algorithm that was uh, developed by the University of Manchester. And this uh, uh, fuzzy logic algorithm was actually built up using data that were collected in the field in Aix-les-Bains and in Chambéry to uh, fine tune these algorithms to have a high accuracy, to uh, uh, give uh, probability of finding alive or deceased victims. Oh, I, see. I think the main challenge that Sintef has faced during the project was the shortage of components. We found out that many parts that are in the motherboards were not available anymore. So what we had to do is to go back to the design phase find uh, uh, parts that are compatible, uh, remake new motherboards, re-test uh, them, and then uh, remanufacture them. 
and this took a lot of time and resources. So here in Greece, we are now on the final phase of the project. Uh, it means that um, we have moved from components testing to integration tests. And here we are checking if the inter integration is working, if the data fusion is working, if we get the complex overview of, a, of an operation through GERSA tools. So here we are basically looking how successful we have been throughout the project. I do expect to um, communicate lots of um, ideas and uh, possible improvements for first um, the development of the software and this whole system. And I was curious how can it be integrated into the different scenarios of doing a first assessment and then uh, moving towards the rescue phase. I'm curious to see if it's possible to mix the, all the information that is coming from different tools to have a better common picture. But one final question arises. How successful was the overall project? So during this large scale field test uh, here in Greece, we've brought together all of the components of the cursor kit, which includes uh, robots for moving into rubble piles with uh, sniffer technologies to allow them to locate trapped victims. We're using uh, geophones, which are seismic detectors, to allow us to detect the vibrations of maybe somebody tapping trapped underneath the rubble pile. Um, and we're using existing drone technology, but applying innovative techniques to that to allow them to bring it all together, as well as IT solutions that overlay everything and give us that common operational picture that allows us to um, more effectively rescue those trapped victims. I think it's brilliant and I was so happy to see that so many practitioners came together. At the end, the data fusion seems to work quite well, so it's possible to have a better common operating picture shared between the operators on the field and the common post. Many expectations were fulfilled. Um, we discovered uh, lots of things to improve, but we also found uh, solutions to problems. I believe that with uh, further work in the future, these technologies uh, will provide uh, important results towards our overall goal, which is the improvement of the efficiency and the safety of urban search and rescue operations. Now, at the end of the project, we can say and that this was a very important step and has, uh, has brought a lot of value to Cursa project and has also brought the success that we have. We understand each other, we know how uh, other, other partners are working. These three and a half years have been very intensive, very challenging, but we have still uh, managed to follow our project plan, uh, follow our project aims and bring innovation to first responders. In the future, we will be able to save lives with new and innovative technologies.